Hey guys, Dr. Ben here, Functional Medicine Center is going to talk about something not quite as uncomfortable as talking about uh, bowel movements and, and fecal matter, but pretty darn close. We're going to be talking about urine and uh, what urine can tell us actually about your health or not being healthy. So uh, stick with me and uh, learn a little bit about what you're seeing with something that you do every single day, multiple times a day, going to the bathroom. So. Urine is a waste product. It travels from the kidneys ultimately out of the body and it's going to remove a lot of different uh, waste products, whether that's from kidney metabolism, breaking down proteins, uh, waste products of a lot of different types. It's our way of getting this out of the body and it's a great, great tool. And if we don't go, if we're not going enough or if we're going too much, it can be indicative of some different problems in there. So. Hey Julie, uh, good to see you in Wichita there. So uh, what we're looking at with the urine is the first thing to look at is what color is your urine. So here's the physiology of what happens. The kidneys, that is where most of the filtering pl takes place. You have two kidneys. They sit kind of in your back uh, right underneath the ribs and that's going to go through the ureters into the bladder. The bladder is gonna be where we hold that urine and the bladder does this, it expands and then uh, when you go to the bathroom, it contracts like that and goes back to normal size, it expands, tells the body and that's the trigger that we're talking about. Hey, I gotta go. One of the things with the bladder that can happen is it can actually tip and then we can pool urine in that bladder and that will be a problem with uh, chronic uh, UTIs, chronic bladder infections, things like that, or people that are going all the time because it's continually um, telling the body, hey, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, but it's not full blown uh, filled up there. It's only going to stimulate a little bit. So then from the bladder, it goes through the urethra and then out of the body through there. So this is crucial. Um, I remember a bunch of years ago, my dad had a prostate issue going on and uh, uh, he he couldn't go to the bathroom and it was like I don't know three days it seemed like it was crazy how long and you know if he would have not gone he would have eventually exploded or something bad would have happened in there so going to the bathroom on a regular basis is just as important as not going too much and having everything right in there okay so what color should our urine be our urine should be a kind of light yellow so um, you know basically you should be able to see a tinge of yellow you should be able to see through it uh, and it shouldn't be just clear it shouldn't be dark but a light light yellow to it um, and that's going to show us that somebody's properly hydrated and things are doing well so what do we look at? Well, sometimes people will have totally clear urine. And if you drank like a gallon of water in one day, your urine would probably be clear. And that's okay short term occasionally, but what happens is if we have too, many, uh, uh, too much water coming in, we're going to be flushing out our electrolytes and we're gonna become out of balance as far as our electrolytes go. So you need to make sure that if you're drinking a gallon of water, you need to be replacing with a lot of electrolytes. I love the Celtic sea salt. It's the, from the Grain and Salt Society, and it's uh, Celtic, C-E-L-T-I-C, sea salt. Uh, it's the number one sea salt you can get out there, over 80 different electrolytes and minerals, way more than any other type of salt out there. So you just add a teaspoon of that extra per day if you're drinking that much water. I've seen people that are drinking a gallon of water today, and their blood work is actually showing that they're dehydrated and they're having kidney issues because they're drinking too much. So we've got to have a balance just like anything on our body we've got to have a balance then we get into yellow especially a darker yellow the clear clearish yellow is going to be okay but when we start going into that um, darker yellow, a couple of things. Sometimes B vitamins can cause that. So if you've ever done that, if you've taken some high dose B vitamins, you're, you'll look at your urine and almost be like neon yellow in there, which uh, you're like, holy cow, what's that? But then after a couple days, it, it normalizes out or, um, or you may just stop taking as much of those B vitamins in there. So if it's really, really bright and, and uh, intense yellow like that, it's usually going to be from your, uh, from your supplements. If we have brown urine, if your brown urine is kind of a brownish tinge, that's usually dehydration. That's going to be some 
Uh, could be medications can cause that, especially ones that are affecting the liver or kidneys, but it could also be an indication of uh, liver issues, especially with bile. So bile is what's secreted from the liver, stored in the gallbladder, and then it's going to be excreted when you eat fat. But if there's liver or, uh, or issues with the bile, it's going to make that urine a little bit more brown as well. So uh, first thing, if you have brown urine, increase your fluid intake a whole lot. If that doesn't change, then you may want to reach out to your healthcare provider and double check on that liver, gallbladder, some things like that. If your urine is cloudy, so if you can't see through it and it's just kind of murky looking, kind of cloudy, grayish, yellowish, things like that, uh, first thing you want to think about is a UTI, a urinary tract infection. This could be in the kidneys, this could be in the bladder. Uh, a lot of women get UTIs more so than men. And a lot of times, again, kind of like we were saying, it's that bladder is tipped urine can pool in there, doesn't totally excrete it, and it's able to store bacteria and pathogens in there. So uh, D-mannose is one of the best things that you can do as far as supplements go. D-mannose, and that just comes in powder form, and you can get that and uh, take that either preventatively or during the infection. So it's one of the best things you can do. It kind of coats that, that bladder and urinary tract and prevents that infection from settling in. Cranberry juice is okay. I just haven't seen it work that well with patients over the years. So um, you know, if, if that works for you, great. If not, uh, I, there's other things that are gonna be more helpful in there. Um, especially if it's got a foul smell, then you know it's more of a urinary tract infection. Uh, it could be indicative of diabetes. Uh, many people that have diabetes are gonna be urinating frequently. So you wanna keep an eye out for that one. And then uh, the one that nobody likes to talk about is STDs. And so hopefully none of you are in that category, but if you are, it may be gonorrhea or some things like that. So that is gonna be brown urine, all right, or cloudy urine. So red, red, this is the good part, is that red most of the time is not blood. It's not, oh my gosh, I'm bleeding in my, my bladder or kidneys or ureters or things like that. Red is going to usually be beets. It's gonna be blueberries. It's gonna be different foods. So if you're eating a lot of beets, or doing a beet cleanse, anything like that, very good chance that your urine is gonna change. I've had some patients come back over the years and we're like, oh my gosh, my, my urine is, is red. Am, am I bleeding? What's going on? And unless it's there for three, four, five, seven days, uh, then you wanna reach out to your primary care uh, doctor, somebody, a healthcare provider that you work with. But if it's just a day or two, that's probably gonna be from the foods. You probably just ate a lot of those things. Um, orange, orange is going to be uh, dehydration. Again, that's kind of on that level between that bright yellow and going to that, that orange dehydration. It could be some supplements as well, um, but uh, definitely going to look at that dehydration first. Okay, so some tips for helping your urine system, urinary tract, all of these different things. You want to stay hydrated. I like uh, between maybe half to three quarters of a gallon of water per day. Uh, once you start getting into that gallon almost too much, you can start flushing out electrolytes. If you're not getting enough, you'll see that in your urine as well, but definitely be taking the Celtic sea salt as well, upwards of a teaspoon a day for most of our patients. You want to maintain a healthy diet. Remember, urine and the urinary tract system is part of our waste management system here. So we're excreting waste products through that urinary tract. And so if we're toxic on other places, it's gonna stress out that urinary tract. So eat as healthy of a diet as possible. You wanna make sure your digestive system is working and you're eliminating as well as you should, again, because of the stress that it'll put on that urinary tract infection or the whole system in general. Then we look at the regular exercise. And exercise, when you're sweating, that's another great way to eliminate toxins out of there. So you wanna make sure that you're exercising regularly and, and getting it to a point where you are sweating, where you're actually excreting some toxins through your skin that way is going to be great. Um, you wanna make sure that you're not holding your urine in, that you're going when you need to go. So my mom was a school teacher and she <laughs> did either she didn't go and she held it or she didn't drink water Water. And so for like 25 years, she was dehydrated and stressed out and wouldn't go because she couldn't leave the classroom, all types of things. So 
Um, you've got to make sure that you go when you need to go. If your uh, dog out on a walk, would they wait? Would they go, oh my gosh, i got to wait till I get home and go in my yard? No, they would just go over on the, on the fire hydrant and, and go whenever they want to. Um, then Kegel exercises are going to be another great thing that you can do. Kegel exercises are you, where you hold it, um, or even while you're going to the bathroom, you'll squeeze and then let go, squeeze and let go, squeeze and let go, and that can be helpful to strengthen that system so that you can hold it when you need to and can go when you need to. Um, for women, definitely, definitely urinate after sex. And uh, that's very common. Uh, one of the things that I've heard over the years is women, when they become sexually active, they get their first urinary tract infections they've ever gotten. One of the most important things you can do is urinate after sex to eliminate that uh, any, any potential pathogens from that. And then for women as well, you want to avoid tight-fitting clothes, especially in the crotch. That will put pressure on that urethra. It'll hold more bacteria, potentially cause urinary tract infections, some things like that. So, all right, colors of your urine. We want it to be a kind of a lightish, yellowish, clear color. If it's anything off of that, there's something else out of balance. Doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, but if it's there for longer than, let's say, five to seven days, a reddish color, a really dark brown color, anything like that, you want to get checked out. But most of the time, increase your water intake or decrease your water intake will make a dramatic change on that. Hope you guys learned a little bit today and make it a great day out there.